Hi everyone, my name is Patrick Akil, and if you're interested in open source, systems thinking, distributed systems, and much, much more, this episode is for you. Joining me today is William Rizzo. What a fantastic guy. He's a lead architect over at SUSE, and we had a blast of a conversation. I'll put all his socials in the description below. Check him out, and with that being said, enjoy the episode. Beyond Coding. Lately, I've been struggling with that because I like audiobooks i like listening to stuff yep. that is my kind of preferred medium also to learn i figured out but then it's really hard because because it is audio i can do other stuff so i do them and then sometimes i feel like the information doesn't process as much as if i would sit down and read Absolutely. so i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out if i need to like take notes or something like i need to I feel like i need to up my note taking game yeah. during listening to audiobooks because otherwise it just vanishes yeah I, I had, I, I had, I, I tried, I had the same problem and I tried <laughs> a kind of note taking technique that didn't work that, okay. that well. <laughs> I was, when, uh, when they were mentioning something or I, I would hear something that is worth to look into, yeah. I would open a tab on my browser and I would just open a page and put it there and then continue the work there. I've also done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work, no. right? <laughs> Absolutely. It doesn't work. It's like. Uh, you have like 1,900 tabs open, and, yeah. you know, and you don't, you don't know where the music is coming from. <laughs> no, you, you don't want to close them either, <laughs> right. and they end up just a mess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I now I do that. take my notes, and um, sometimes also the old way, you know, yeah. with a pen. <laughs> and, uh, Interesting. Yeah, and, uh, like and that, that works, but it absolutely, um, I also like prefer to listen to things. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Do you listen to a lot of audiobooks then as well? Uh, I do while I'm driving uh, mm. with a car, maybe a long trip. Uh, then I like to listen to an audiobook, um, but they wouldn't be necessarily technical. Yeah. Uh, but um, if I'm, I found myself buying technical books, uh, like physical books. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, listen, no, podcasts and sometimes videos as well on YouTube, but just yeah. let it run and I'm listening uh, in, the, in the headset and then maybe... I pause what I'm doing and I go back to the video if I listen to something that I, if I hear something that is really worth checking out. Um, but other than that, yeah that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can imagine. I've been listening to, it's called The Engineering Manager's Path. It's by Camille Fournier. Yeah. And she's not, she's not reading the book, which I also thought like maybe that's a bit odd. I expected the author to also read the book or like do the voiceover for the audiobook, but it's not her. But regardless, I feel like the essence of the content is really good. But then I'm just like, uh, if I were to say what she said so far, and I've listened to a few hours, it'd be really small because I probably, I feel like I recollect a small bit of it. So mm -hmm. I'm struggling with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to listen to more technical oriented books. It's just hard it is. to figure out how to retain that info. It is. I, 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 think, I, think so I, I think I have the same problem to retain an information when it's just when i just hear yeah. it but if i'm if i'm reading it somehow i'm giving it a shape in my exactly. head exactly so yeah. i can i can you know i can call that address in memory <laughs> <laughs> when i need it <laughs> oh, that's a good one i don't know if it has to do with focus because i i do like audio as a medium also because i can do other stuff i mean you mentioned driving i don't really drive but i i, I don't even know what i do sometimes i clean i clean or i cook and i like to listen to stuff um but yeah, maybe it's because of that multiprocessing that it doesn't retain as much as when I sit down yeah. and just read because then I'm only doing that. I can't really do anything else. Yeah, I think, uh, well, I think that we we do work a lot with visualization when we are learning something. Mm. Um, the, there, is, there, there is this Nobel Prize that mentioned that like the, the work with system one and system two. We have our system one, which is the system in our brain that we engage to do mundane things that where it doesn't it doesn't require our attention. Yeah. Whereas system two is the one that we really need uh, uh, to spend energies in, and we can't engage in a two type of system two activities. Mm. We can only do a system uh, one system two activity and one system one activity, and the system one activity can affect the system two or can end up not being done well. The the example is. Like you're driving and, you know, maybe you're driving in the city and you're having an argument with the person sitting beside you. You are very, very likely to have an accident because system two is engaged. And the activity that you have going on is also a system two type of activity because mm. it's getting a lot of energy, a lot of processing in your head. Yeah. Um, 
So I think that you wouldn't be able to learn anything if you are doing the learning part, or maybe audio, yeah. and you are also cleaning up. You're mm. also, uh, I don't know, sorting out things on your computer because those are kind of two system two activities. Yeah, they interfere. Yeah, they, they do interfere. So. Interesting. I've, I've never heard that theory about the system two and the system one. But uh, I, I, thinking, I think the book is Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. Ah, okay. So that's on my list to, to listen to as an audio book. Oh, there Actually, you go. <laughs> we, have the, we have the book over there behind us. Uh, it's, it's, it, I really recommend it. It's, yeah? it's a good book. Uh, I'll put that on my list. I'll, yeah, I'll take that next. Yeah. Interesting. But I do feel like it's recognizable, but also like when I'm picking up something new, I feel like that is system two. Like I'm really engaged and I feel like time slows down. Right, right. I, I th Like even both ways. Sometimes it slows down and sometimes it even goes faster. I, I don't quite recognize when what happens. But then when I've done that over and over and over again, then I'm like, okay, now that I've done this, it's kind of more so autopilot. And then I feel like I can put an audio book on and like do stuff at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but maybe it's still system two then. That's my, my pitfall. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, I think that it, it you, uh, well, I think there are activities that can go from one system to another when, when they become your, um, your habit, let's call mm. it a habit. Uh, they can go end off to the system one. Yeah. However, you might have the impression like you're driving and you just, all of a sudden, you become, you become a good driver. You know, you're confident and comfortable. Just start picking up your phone, just sending out messages on yeah. your phone while you're driving. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you uh, are good at driving so you can pick up the phone. It, mean, it just means that you are getting off the focus and now the focus is shifting on something else that unfortunately yeah. can become dangerous. So. Yeah, interesting. And it also, I feel like it snowballs, right? Because probably I, I don't drive, so I've never done this, but I feel like some people would start it out and they would be like, I'm just going to check what notification that was. Yeah. And then they do it again and they're like, oh, I'll just send a fast reply. Yeah. And then the next thing they're like browsing Reddit and driving at the same time, like it, it right. escalates. Right, right. And in their mind, they probably don't see the graduality of how it escalates. And yeah. it, you find yourself at a point where you're just looking at your phone, you're not really driving anymore. Right, right. Which is very dangerous. It is, it is. I, and driving uh, on the motorbike, you notice that a lot. Mm. So sometimes I, I always look at the wheels of a car, not necessarily at the car, mm. to see what is, what is happening with that car. And you see this, this car maybe like waving from left to right, not a lot, a yeah. little bit, which is still, for most people, is still not, a problem, yeah. But for a biker, not a biker is very um, vulnerable, right, to to whatever happens in the road. So I'm care I'm double careful, yeah. And when I pass a car like that, I notice that they are busy with their phone, yeah. And that is what you don't notice. You, you the attention that you put in the phone um, extends over in in time. It extends the more you the more you do it, yeah. And all of a sudden. I hope some people realize that they're having their eyes on the phone for something like 30 seconds and they're not looking at the road anymore. And yeah. 30 seconds, they can, there are a lot of things that yeah, can yeah. happen on the road. That's so. a long time. Right. Yeah. Right. If you see them wobbly, I mean, especially on a motorbike, like I can imagine that's pretty scary. Yeah. It yeah. gets scary because that, that person can maybe get upset or something, shift the attention and right, and things go wrong. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, when you're, when you're picking up a new topic, and I assume you do that pretty often because uh, it's just the field we're in. Sometimes we have to pick up a new topic. Do you really like lay down everything and focus on the specific topic or what, what is your process? Um, sometimes I do. Uh, I like to, to, uh, to I, I have built up a, a process on my own um, kind of a routine. Okay. Uh, it's like putting everything into little boxes, mental boxes, mm. kind of. Um, I, let's say I, I need to learn something work-wise or I need to learn something and I just create my little space and I'll say, okay, from this time until this time, I'm going to do that and I'm going to put away everything. Yeah. It doesn't always <laughs> go the way you plan it, <laughs> but, um, it, that, that is, that is the idea. Um, I, 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 I listened at a, a tech head once yeah. and there was this man talking about how the how successful 
uh, inventors put things into physical or mental boxes yeah. to pick up where they left. And I tried it. It works. Mm. Um, I should use more physical boxes than mental boxes, maybe. <laughs> but with digital work, it's difficult to 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 do so. But I try to do that. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I had um, a friend of my own on. She had some Moguti, and she's a product manager. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, like the idea of managing a backlog and like prioritizing and figuring out what goes first and where the value is. It's like, how do you do that? And she's like, I, I put everything in boxes. That's the first thing she said. I put everything in mental boxes with, with regards to categories. And then we align, okay, what goes first from which bucket? Do we do a full bucket at once or do we not do that? But she categorizes everything in buckets. And when she laid it out, I was like, okay, categorization. That makes a lot of sense. And I don't think I do that consciously, but definitely subconsciously. I'm like, okay, this goes there, that goes there. We do that. Yeah, for it to make sense. Yeah, we do that. We, we, need, to, we need to relate to uh, previous knowledge to that, that we have previous experiences. We always do that. We constantly yeah. do that. We, and when we stop doing it, we evolve slower yeah. into that learning that we want to do or into that uh, task that we want to do. We, mo we move slower. But we, if we can do it more consciously, and that's the box, right? That's yeah. the categorization. Yeah, you, 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 yeah, you're winning. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but then the problem is, I feel like, I've heard this before as well of a friend, Diana Montalion, and she says people are really good at linear thinking. Like if A happens, then B, like those subsequent order of events, we're really good at that. Mm -hmm. But then when you're talking about a system, any system, even a distributed system, it's harder because if A happens and all of a sudden you get Z and you're like, how the hell did we go from A to Z? Like Because B is supposed to be next. Yeah. And then that's where the complexity kicks in and we're not really good at that yet. Right, right. Yeah. The, the, well, the co complexity... There are many definitions of, uh, the, it's funny, I, I just had a talk uh, at a meetup group and we, I, I asked what is the definition of a complex system mm. and nobody dared to answer. No, <laughs> that's no, a hard one. No, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. and, and there is no universal accepted definition of what a complex system is. Yeah. So it was a little bit of a, also a cheeky question because yeah, yeah. You, know, you know that <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> um, but they, that's the that that is the complex system. The, if you think about okay, represent in two D, and is the simple and in the simplest form as you can a complex system. The first thing that ninety percent of people are gonna do, they're gonna do some sort of web mm. of points that connect to many other points. Yeah, and that is where what you just said, right? I mean, you don't go from A to B. You might go from A to T, Z. A, E, and B is the last item, but there isn't a last item because yeah. everything is connected. That is complexity. That is how we don't think, Yeah. Um, but that is how we uh, uh, live, how we exist. Our brain works like that, right? Exactly. So and That's sometimes also what we build. Right. Maybe not consciously, Absolutely. but like that is the output sometimes of what we build or like a combination of efforts. Right. Can create that right kubernetes uh, we're, yeah, we're yeah. working <laughs> we're working with that we 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 hate ourselves that much <laughs> to build a complex system to live in so uh, <laughs> is that why you think like a lot of people like kubernetes is very powerful I, i'm assuming that's where the power also come from, comes from but also where the complexity comes from with people picking it up for the first time for example um it is a stiff curve uh and so your question is um uh, I, I didn't fully get it no worries. Like the the point that it is more so complex, right? Right. If, if it's a graph or not, do you think that's why it's so powerful as well? Because it is built and modeled like that? No, I don't think that the power of Kubernetes comes from mm. its complexity. Um, I think it comes from um, years of understanding how things should be done from. Um, from a problem perspective, a challenge and a solution yeah. perspective, like those feedback loops, right? They come from more from robotics than than uh, than software engineering, I think. <laughs> software engineering, <laughs> but um, the the some some problems are solved in Kubernetes with uh, an approach which is unique, and then they bring in other 
um, other concept and all these concepts together they form this distributed and yeah. complex system and the power of kubernetes i think it be, it, it's the is the sum of all these approaches and these methods to solve problems in an intelligent yeah. way the complexity i think is a byproduct yeah. of it so it's not necessarily the design uh, need well it, it's a design need but the complexity is a byproduct of that need Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think that might be a fallacy that if you think that something is complex, therefore it is powerful. I feel like it's it's more so that keeping things simple and simplistic, that's where the power lies. Right. But you just add on top of that and then the byproduct as you mentioned could be complexity. True. True. Yeah. I think I think I think it's a good way of seeing it. And and nevertheless it's absolutely true. The the learning curve in Kubernetes is quite steep. Yeah. Um and there are things that run on top of Kubernetes, oh, yeah. which get, which are have even a steeper uh, learning curve. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How how was that for you then picking it up for the first time? Because you you're not a software engineer no. by background. No, absolutely not. No. Yeah. <laughs> what you what you do before? Um, I worked before uh, working on Kubernetes, and where I am now, I used to work at Hitachi Vantara. Yeah, and I was specially uh, specifically working on uh, conversion, upper converge systems like with uh, VMware um, and um, Microsoft Hyper-V, okay. or also some SAP HANA. Uh, so from there to Kubernetes, um, well, let's say that I, if I, I might still feel I am. Living the imposter syndrome. <laughs> mm, everyone is feeling <laughs> like think, that. Yeah, I mm. love it. Well, <laughs> I, I love it, and I and I'm freaked out. <laughs> yeah, but um, it it was steep. It was steep. I I got interested in Kubernetes, of course, like everybody else, as something absolutely cool, um, and it made a lot of sense. Yeah, we needed an orchestration for containers, um, and what we had with Mesosphere wasn't really doing it hmm. um but it was it was a very hard at the yeah. beginning it was very hard i was trying to understand what the heck am i doing uh, and and um was it just you or were you with the team no kind of picking was, that up uh picking that up on my own time okay. i was just learning it i was just learning it and yeah. then and then i said well i you know this is what i want to do mm. so um i applied for a few positions and then eventually i got uh, at Suze, which had just had, had just acquired Rancher, yeah, and I I didn't know that they were acquiring Rancher, but so I was my approach in Kubernetes was through uh, first vanilla, you know, the hard way like everybody else, yeah, and um, and then I started looking into Rancher and the Rancher Kubernetes engines, and I was like, okay, that's cool, that's cool, let's keep going. And I I got the job at Suze, and then I think after a week or maybe, or maybe no 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 actually while I was waiting for my first day, mm. it was announced that Suze acquired Rancher, and I was oh, like, that's funny. whoa, <laughs> <laughs> good nice. stuff, I'm, yeah, I'm, exactly, I'm in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so, how those kind of combinations of events sometimes happen. Right, right. right. Yeah. You just sit in the middle, and it's like, whoa, I'm just just gonna let that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, but you didn't like you didn't study any software engineering related N topics, no? Uh, not as a, as a major, not as a requirement. Well, it was more of a need. Yeah, uh, I studied physics. Yeah, um, not completed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, without dating myself, when I when I studied physics in in Italy, uh, you needed five years to get any paper <laughs> yeah. worth showing. Um, but nowadays it's three years. Then you do, for your bachelor. Then you, you, you know. Yeah, they've shortened it. Right, they shortened Good. it. Uh, yeah. I, did, I did my three years, which meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, so. Yeah. But no, I, I that's where I started my uh, my software engineering. Um, ne uh, well, software engineering. My programming. I wouldn't call it software engineering. Yeah, uh, was with Fortran. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I, then I did some C, uh, and moved on just wh when I left the university, I just moved on for fun with some programming, Yeah, my Perl, my Pascal and 
you know, don't let me mention them all. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's okay. Did, did your background in physics, do you think it, it's still helping you? Because I always Absolutely. wonder. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Like in, in some weird way, what we're doing now or, or the field that you're in, in the technology field, I feel like you can always leverage kind of your past experience. Yeah. Uh, absolutely it's um if if i would if i would travel back in time yeah. <laughs> and choose something else it would be exactly the same thing that's also i would, I yeah. would I, it's it's um uh, it is what i would w- maybe the only thing that i would do is complete <laughs> <laughs> come on man it's not that bad <laughs> but no absolutely it was it was uh, the best the best choice and I don't think I also today is affecting some decisions that I take. Yeah. At least in my work. Do you have an example of that? Like the knowledge of physics, how it's helping you now as well? Yeah. Uh, Yes, I, I do. Um, When I I can't be very too, too specific. Okay. But that's okay. Like for me, um, in example, the entropy and enthalpy, like energy of a system, yeah. the, you know, the chaos, what some people like to call chaos. And, um, it, it's always applicable to a complex or a coordinated or, a coordinated or semi-coordinated system. Yeah. And the, the more, um, uh, how, how, the more problems you see, the more um, unclean is an outcome, yeah. though you have an outcome, right? You have an outcome and it's what you wanted. The more, um, it's, it can be kind of hard to explain how I see it, but, <laughs> no worries. but the, the more uh, unclean that outcome is, even yeah. though it is what you want, the most likely that system that generated that outcome is not all right. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be a stable system in the future or a stable solution for the future so we should go back and redraw and and look further at what are the, the improvement that can be made yeah so that is um uh, a little bit my view my 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 um not my view but my my uh remembrance of my physics studies right when, interesting when you look for a ba- an energetic balance of a of a of an ecosystem of a system yeah i can imagine that that's helpful now because Right. Sometimes the internals of a system or what is actually help, happening can be right due to time, due to many hands having touched different things and different components. Maybe some standardization hadn't happened or some conventions weren't in place yet, or things just shifted and through learning you've improved. Right. It can be really hard figuring out what the internals is. Yeah. So then you're like, okay, this is the input and this is the output, right? You kind of treat it as a black box. Yeah. And then if you figure out that your output is not necessarily what you wanted or it's like deviating slightly, then something internally is still incorrect, right? Right, incorrect. And, yeah. and you do see a shift in energy as well. Yeah. You're doing increasing energy. This somehow the system is trying to balance itself. Uh, yeah. Kind of very um spiritual way of saying it, but the system is trying to balance itself. So you see a, an increase in energy, you see if you're looking at logs, you see way more log than you should be seeing. A lot yeah. of stuff going on. The system is imbalanced, so therefore, there is some work that needs to be done. Yeah, very so, interesting. Yeah. Where, where did kind of this this love or this passion for systems and even distributed systems where where did that originate from? At university. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, as well. Uh, they we were working on um, a system. Uh, uh, on a on, well, a very early system for or HPC, high performance okay. computing. Uh, it was a cluster of 486 DX system. Yeah, that says says nothing to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's uh, that's age. <laughs> <laughs> so there was the pen, you know the Pentium. Yeah, yeah, that's that's after. <laughs> okay, uh, gotcha. <laughs> so. Uh, well, anyway, this this white box computer, right? I mean, this 486 is just x86 system, okay. um, and that 486. That's why that's where x86 k- take the names from. Okay, just to let you know, maybe you look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, but that we were putting them together to get. Um, so we we were using a Beowulf type of architecture, yeah, uh, to build a high performance cluster. So 
basically message passing interface, processes, you know, uh, being shared across multiple CPUs. And I found it very, uh, yeah, intriguing and interesting. And I kept working on it with the others. And I did develop some kernel uh, patches uh, for for extending the memory use across CPUs. Yeah. Uh, so stacking the memory, literally. Um, the that was the the starting point of distributed system. Uh, then I I left university. Uh, I did a few other things in the meanwhile. Not very meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> They're all meaningful. Yeah, in absolutely. Some way. You're yeah. right. You're right. They are. Um, and then I I I was in well, and I was interested in the Open Mosaics uh, project at the okay. time. It was by Moshe Bar. Yeah. He he created this kernel patch for Linux for a single system image cluster. So I worked on the Beowulf clusters, and that one was an SSI. So the to explain as as easy as I can, the application would see the system as a multi CPU, um, like landscape uh, landscape operating yeah. system, right? So the if the if you had threads, they wouldn't migrate to other CPUs. However, if you had processes, they would. Mm. Uh, and then a group, I was working on the, on, okay, la, now that's, I, I got something to do. I can do just for fun. Yeah. Uh, well, for fun. For fun and to try out, I can create the memory stack sharing for the for SSI. And there was a group of uh, ladies from India. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant group of girls. They created this patch for the memory sharing, and it was absolutely the next level. <laughs> I couldn't do that, yeah. and yeah. Then Marshall Bar, uh, he, he moved to Xen, I think, afterwards, and the project got um, stopped. No, I think there were no maintainers yeah. uh, left for it, and I didn't have, I didn't have it <laughs> to <laughs> maintain it myself. So I said, "Well, I was a spectator, just gonna, you know." Yeah, just I'm not going interested anymore. I, I was interested, but I'm not interested in maintaining, so I'm not proposing myself for it. But yeah, that's that a humongous, it. humongous it task. Is. No, it is. Yeah. I, I feel it is. Yeah, I, I all feel. respect for any maintainers out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Like it's it's so interesting to me that open source is what a lot of software fundamentally is built upon, right? Right. But that also has a maintenance component to it. Can be a team. Can also sometimes be one person, which yeah. is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Sometimes this thing that you built can have an outreach that you wouldn't imagine. And then you have tens of thousands of people, thousands, maybe a hundred thousand people telling you what they think of this thing that you built, <laughs> right? No, no, no. You should go right or left or straight. And it's all, it's all different anyways. And right. there's all trade-offs because that's what software is. It is. It is. And, and I, I find very uh, concerning that there are so many maintainers yeah. that are doing, as you say, a humongous job beside their daily job. Yeah. Um, and there is no actual support, meaning, you know, funding uh, or some, you know, some, I don't know, on GitHub, some uh, donations that you can do. Yeah. There are many that receive any donation and they, they struggle to, to keep the lights on on yeah. their project and at home uh, because, yeah, many have a second, uh, have an actually daily, daily job, but yeah. many others, that is their source of income, so which is their productivity and their open source efforts. Yeah. So yeah, for those people that have two jobs, like the open source is I, I see that as a job as well and like a right. day to day for income. Right. They probably have built this thing and the, there's a such a huge sunken cost in general that they don't want to let go, right? right? Even if they wish they would let go, they can't do that to no. themselves or to a community because now you're kind of responsible to the people that are using it as well. Yeah. Which is this very, very weird dichotomy that I don't think you have in any other field where something is open, people can use it, then you are responsible. And if you let go of that, you either disappoint people or things just break, yeah, which no, is also think, an option. Yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a construct only of open source. Yeah. It's, uh, which, is, which is hard. Uh, Alex Ellis as well, I read a few, few notes of him, a few points where he says how hard it is to yeah. to work on these things without uh, without support, so you should always think. I was like, we can. We, I think we can spare. We can. We can spare that pizza money. That pizza money for <laughs> you know for a good project. 
Exactly. It's, it's not going to change our life, we do or we don't, but it can change the life of somebody else. Exactly. That, that is the power of kind of collectiveness in that aspect, exactly. right? Yeah. yeah. If that collectiveness then supports one entity, then all of a sudden that's a huge difference. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't see, right now, I don't see that changing, right? It's the power of open source. Everyone can use it. You can build something. All of a sudden people love it. They use it. It needs to be somewhat established, but still it takes some time. It does. It does, but you also have to th you have to look at where we're coming from um, in open source, where we were thirty years ago, where we were twenty years ago, where we were ten years ago, yeah, and where we are now, right? I mean, um, before it was absolutely that geek in that in that dark corner building something, pushing it on internet somewhere, yeah, with a modem. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and you hope you get some interest, and that's it. Yeah. But you don't hope to get money. You're hoping to get interest. Yeah. And then now there are people building something which is massive. They put it out there, looking for interest and hoping also to build a business around it. Yeah. So you think about the the product, and you've been you think about the business model around it, whereas before. You think about that cool thing and the solution. It's like you know, let me see if somebody else wants to wants to play with it as well. So that's that's how it was. Yeah, that that business model, open core, is what I've been told. That to me is fascinating, right? And right. it can come from both ways. That you already have kind of an open source tool, and you make it easier for people to use it, make it easier to integrate in organizations. You take away some of the operational maintenance part of it you yeah. run it basically for someone else to use it right i think that's very interesting or the other way around where you internally you build a product and then you open source part of that product that you've already built right the the i i also find it fascinating i also find it quite dangerous mm. the you know the those paywalls that yeah. sometimes company build and it's it's kind of using the open source community sometimes and it, which is not bad, but you my abuse of the concept. So like, yeah, I am re releasing this piece of code. I'm releasing this product. Uh, but to take it to the enterprise level, to take it to actually use it in your company securely and safely, you got to need to pay. Uh, and for some startups, no. that's, that's a no-go. <laughs> that yeah. is like, it's what they can do. So I do instead like the SaaS model where you release the whole thing. Yeah, you know, use it on prem, on cloud, however you want it. Uh, but if you want, if you are a startup, you can also think about using the SaaS version, and you know, you build your you build your you build your product around ours. It's yeah. fine, and then you can also use the SaaS version because you can't you don't have money to build rack and rack of servers and yeah. You know, so I, I prefer that model instead of the paywall of the enterprise features. Yeah, to me, I, I don't see the paywall initiative having much longevity anymore. Like that feels kind of dated. Right. It because does. if I, like engineering has a lot of decision-making power, more so nowadays than how it used to be, right? Yeah. In a team, you can already decide kind of, especially if you're in a startup, what you're going to do, what tools you're going to leverage. And exactly as you mentioned, if our focus is this product, then I don't want to maintain some server with some piece of software just because it's free, right? Exactly. If you can afford it, you get it as a SaaS variant yeah. and then you use it and you still focus on what you need to focus on. Exactly, exactly. So I think because the paywall like already is a hurdle for people to adopt or to even figure things out, I feel like that doesn't have longevity anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't. A great example is Backstage, right? Mm. I mean, Backstage is a fantastic product, is needed. We need to enable developers to, um, to get detached from the platform that they are uh, that they are deploying to, yeah. Um, and backstage makes a lot of sense, and things like backstage make a lot of sense. But when you start, it's donated. I hate the word donated, but yeah. it's handed over <laughs> to the CNCF. Yeah. Um, but if you really want to use it in an, in an organization, you're gonna need Arbuck, and yeah. Arbuck, you 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 you've got to pay. You gotta pay for to have it. And you gotta pay for that plugin. And I find it, I I find it, um, a model 
which does not have does not take into account this those little companies that are trying to make it. Yeah. So that's hard. Which are a lot and that's a lot of business to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, that's hard. Yeah. I, I think it has a lot to do with with trust as well. Like there's this thing called trust equation mm -hmm. and I, I don't recall it correctly to kind of define what it means now, but <laughs> maybe from some people look it up. Uh, but in any case, like the way you act or or your honesty and your integrity that all shines through, right? Shines through in what you do as a person, shines through in what you stand for as a company as well. I believe that. Yeah. And things like that will diminish from that trust equation. And some people will still accept that, that level of trust that they have. And some people won't, and yep. they won't use those services anymore. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And I think that, that holds true for people as well as organizations, which is interesting, because then the organization is kind of an artifact of how you operate as a person as well. Yes. Or like as a collective. Yes, whatever. Which, yeah. Whatever you build, it's whatever you are, right? It's that that is that is sometimes true. We're not going to mention companies, of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, but when you when you kind of came into this field, would you imagine being so involved in either communities or with people in in so far, or did you have kind of a different perspective? Because I always think, for me, I thought, okay, I'm going to be software engineer, right? I'm going to work with software. It's going to be more so isolated. I'm going to create this piece of artifact kind of reflecting sometimes how I think and stuff. And that's then going to combine into this puzzle piece that is going to be our picture of reality or the picture of the thing we're building. And I'm going to do that with other people, but I'm still going to be responsible for like my little puzzle pieces, which holds true in some aspects, but completely not in other aspects either. True. Uh, no, I didn't imagine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, when, I, when I started with IT, of course, like everybody else, I think, um, it's your thing. Yeah. It's it's your time. You are interested. You go through with your what you're learning, what you're doing. Um, when I moved into when when I started getting more and more interested into open source, which of course started with Linux. I'm not gonna tell you the kernel version because otherwise you, I'm really gonna tell you how old <laughs> I am. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, the but the, you, it it was it, yeah you're you're in your room right and yeah. you're like you're like okay this is this is cool this is how it works and you go with Linux from scratch and you start compiling your own kernel <laughs> and all of a sudden you feel you feel untouchable yeah uh, but you 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 get out and nobody absolutely care <laughs> about but you're you on a high though <laughs> yeah but you are yeah. absolutely off you know yeah. in the clouds um, you you get that to today is exactly the opposite mm. is everybody's interested in what you're doing everybody has a sort of not knowledge but awareness of this open source movement of this community of this being part of something there are so many conferences like take kubecon take qcon take uh so many <laughs> devops days so many conferences going on and you see like-minded people that are not those geeks sitting in a room, in a dark room and doing their own thing that nobody understands, but it's more of uh, very open, very social animals. All yeah. of a sudden we are all, we realize that we're not that asocial <laughs> uh, a person, but we are very social. We want to show, we want to tell, we want to hear. Um, and uh, I, I find it fantastic. It's I, I'm I'm busy with the community. I'm trying to build something. I'm trying to uh, be part of it, and yeah. I couldn't imagine not being anymore. So it's it is it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really happy that there are those spaces where people with that are like minded and have a shared passion can come together. Right. Right. Because that that is usually the only part of the equation you need for knowledge sharing to happen. People that come to those events have a genuine sense of curiosity so you have yeah. really interesting discussions yeah. and that's the real community aspect of things it is it, it is. is so different from how it used to be it is before the 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 get together place was an irc channel <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know and uh, it had you begin building your own image of how somebody is and not necessarily um of a person image, you know, you give a, sh a mental shape to that, uh, to that um, nom de plume or acronym or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Nickname. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, but that's it. And you build a friendship and you build uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, you build this, 
this way of communicating with that person. And that, that is this, you do exactly the same things in real life, right? Yeah. But nowadays you do it really in real life. Now you have a place to meet. Yeah. You have devrels that meet constantly somewhere uh, in the world at conferences and they they get in touch. It's like, are you going to that conference? No, I'm going to that one. I'm going to that one. And it's it's beautiful. It's uh, it, it wasn't like that. No. <laughs> it wasn't like that. No. And I think it's, I love it. The only thing is I'm really bad at kind of that part of upholding connections and like maintaining a network. Like I talk to a lot of people just by virtue of doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I got you on because Bart Farrell said, William's awesome. Talk to William. <laughs> Bart right? is awesome. But, uh, yeah, but <laughs> Bart reached out to me and I feel like I'm really bad at kind of maintaining connections or a network. I, are right. you like that as well or do you kind of have um, your stride in that? I, I, I am not good at it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm bad. Um, but I'm not good at it. I, I see some people like Bart, an example, like uh, Alessandro Vozza or Andrea Giardini, the people that I, that I uh, am lately constantly texting with and organizing something. I'm, I see that they have a method in it. They have their own way of doing and they're good at it. You can tell they're good at it. Yeah. Me, uh, I'm not bad. I'm not an obstacle to that, <laughs> which is a good thing. Sounds like good. <laughs> but um, I, I'm not uh, as invested as they are. Yeah. Uh, I could be more, but my job is, is also, I'm making an excuse now, and my job <laughs> is also preventing me from being more invested than I am. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not a dev rel, which I need to keep the, those communications going. I'm not a content creator. Uh, I'm so I'm a consultant, so yeah. so I need to make those billable hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can make that same excuse. That's that's very really funny. Good. Uh, it's like I want to, but maybe maybe there's like the incentive is not there. I don't know why. But it's just yeah, it's it's time and effort. Yeah, it is time and effort, and it's also what you like, right? I mean, yeah. I do love the social part. I love it. Me too. Uh, and yeah. I, I couldn't be without it, but. Sometimes I love more the technical part. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it pulls you back. Yeah, it pulls me back. It says, this is who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Just do your thing. That's Just, also fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's get back to that, get back to that keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's fine. It's, 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 it's why I, it is why I am in the, in this community, in this, in this today now, it is because I love that technical part. Yeah. It is because I want to get out and say, Hey, check out what I just did or check out what I just learned or check out what that guy does. And um, yeah, yeah that, maybe that's why I'm not good yeah. <laughs> at keeping contacts because I still want to keep my, you know, maybe that, that guy that in, the, in, the, in the dark room coding or, or compiling still kernel inside you. <laughs> is still there. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> he's still claiming I mean, space. <laughs> I, I like that a lot because the, it's a spectrum, right? And you kind of fit somewhere on that spectrum. And I don't think there's a right or wrong. There's no, no golden ticket. There's no, oh, this is what you're supposed to be. Yeah. You're just there. And you're like, oh, I'm a little bit more left. I'm a little bit more right. It doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. Right? Absolutely. And you find your stride in whatever you do and you enjoy the sides as well, which yes. is completely fine. Yes. Yes. Absolutely I think that's really true. cool. I'm absolutely agreeing with this. Cool, man. <laughs> I've uh, really enjoyed this talk so far. Likewise. It Likewise. was a lot of fun having you on. Is there still anything you want to share with regards to our audience? Um, Just... Um, well, no, I, I, I like, uh, I like our audience. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I would love to say just hook, uh, hook up with me. Just, just try to find me. Let's have a, a chat or, uh, whatever, but that's, that's not what I'm going to say, but though I just said it. <laughs> I'll say that for you. Don't, don't worry about that. I, I think I should prepare people more because I always throw this curveball at the end. Yeah. Sometimes I don't prepare people for it. No, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't prepare them. Don't prepare them. Just, you know, just cut this piece and, uh, and right. just, just tell them. There's no, that, there's no cutting though. This is going to make it. Good, good, good. So just, 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 uh, just, uh, just ask them at the end, uh, the, the question, you know, that they have to come up with. <laughs> That's also good. Some people take and roll with it and some people are like, no, I really liked it. <laughs> it's also fine. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's fine. <laughs> Good stuff. Then I'm going to round it off here, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Check out William Rizzo. Is that Rizzo, the pronoun? Yes. Rizzo, William Rizzo. I'm going to put all his socials in the description below. Check him out. Let him know you came from our show. And with that being said, thank you for listening again. We'll see you on the next one.